means food or nutrition. So the process of nutrient enrichment, especially nitrate and phosphate, and consequent loss of the species diversity due to the lack of oxygen in a water body is called as eutrophication. So eutrophication could be defined as the process of nutrient enrichment, especially nitrate and phosphate, and consequent loss of species diversity due to lack of oxygen in a water body is called eutrophication. Eutrophication could be classified in two types. One is natural eutrophication. Second could be called as man-made, artificial or cultural eutrophication. We will be studying them one by one. First we will be talking about natural eutrophication. It occurs in a very long time due to addition of nutrients produced by forest fire or erosion of soil or weathering of rocks or in the other words we can say that factors causing natural eutrophications are such as forest fire, erosion of soil, weathering of rocks etc. Now coming to the artificial eutrophication. This occurs due to addition of nutrient especially nitrate and phosphate and nitrate is generally limited in marine environment so due to nitrate eutrophication primarily occurs in marine water so primary occurs in marine water and phosphate is limited in terrestrial water so that's why we observe that phosphate play major role in eutrophication in terrestrial water bodies. Now we will be talking about types of lake according to their productivity or according to their nutrient availability status. The first type of lake is called as oligotrophic lake. Oligotrophic lake as all of you are aware are the lakes which are low in nutrient and low in productivity. These lakes are said to be young and deeper lake. They have high species diversity with rich variety of chlorophyce means green algae members. And if we draw a diagram of stratification of lake, all of you know the stratification of lake takes place in both tropical as well as temperate region where the different layers are separated because of non-mixing of the water as well as the temperature gradient. So these layers are the stratification layer in the lakes are the uppermost layer is called as epilimnion, the lowermost layer is called as hypolimnion, the layer in middle is referred to as thermocline. The thermocline is nothing, it is the intermediate layer in which there is a rapid change in temperature. So oxygen generally in the case of oligotrophic lake is present in hypolimnion during summers. Lake though have a low productivity in terms of primary productivity means the primary productivity is low. Primary productivity is nothing, it is the rate of fixation of sunlight by phytoplanktons when we talk about the water body. Blooms are rare, abrupt growth of blue green algae means rarely we observe algal bloom and some of the fishes which are observed in oligotrophic lake are salmonoid fishes, example salmon and trout and these are the character of generally fresh water. So thermal stratification in lakes we have already explained which is mentioned in the diagram. Now coming to the oligotrophic lake, here what we have shown, we have shown epilimnion with the help of E, thermocline with the help of T and hypolimnion with the help of H and vertically we have shown the depth and then we are showing the oxygen presence. So if we see the penetration of sunlight in the case of oligotrophic lake, so sunlight is reaching till hypolimnion. 
but the concentration of oxygen which was more in epilimnion decreased slightly in thermocline and hypolimnion but the oxygen is present in hypolimnion in the case of oligotrophic lake oxygen profile in oligotrophic lake has been shown in the given diagram now we will be talking about eutrophic lake which itself is very interesting eutrophic lake as you can see in the picture the cell light generally reach till epilimnion layer and oxygen concentration will also start decreasing in comparison to epilimnion there will be less oxygen in thermocline and very less in hypolimnion because the sunlight is only penetrated till epilimnion so the rate of photosynthesis will be lesser in thermocline and hypolimnion so oxygen is absent in hypolimnion in summer in the case of eutrophic lake photosynthesis is absent due to the absence of light therefore oxygen content is decrease so if you observe some of the observation in both the lakes epilimnion has high concentration of dissolved oxygen due to surface reaction there is no mixing of water therefore lake is stratified due to temperature gradient so what is the reason of thermal stratification of lake because there is no mixing of oxygen and there is temperature gradient therefore lake is stratified and thermal stratification is generally more observed in tropical lake followed by temperate lake it is observed in both kind of lakes due to thermal stratification however epilimnion oxygen does not mix with the hypolimnion which we already said that there is no mixing of oxygen in oligotrophic lake water is clear enough that light can that light can penetrate up to hypolimnion and we have also mentioned that oligotrophic lake is low in nutrient and low in productivity and thus dew will remain available due to photosynthesis however in eutrophic lake hypolimnion does not receive any sunlight as shown in the picture so oxygen is not produced in absence of photosynthesis moreover the decomposition of dead algae the algal bloom which was there in the case of eutrophic lake consumed the oxygen which was present earlier the other type of the lake is mistrophic lake these are the intermediate lake between oligotrophic and eutrophic so lake have a intermediate characteristic between oligotrophic and eutrophic lake eutrophic lake have certain more characteristics that they are high in inorganic nutrient and these are old lakes and shallow lakes they have low species diversity low species diversity and oxygen is absent in hypolimnion during summers and they are highly productive highly productivity blue green alga produces green mass and algal blooms are more frequent and in terms of fishes they eutrophic lake have coarse fish example is perch and roach fish the fourth type of the lake is dystrophic lake and these are also referred as wash lake they are also called as brown water lakes why we call them as brown water lakes because they are heavily stained water due to deposition of large amount of organics which have a terrestrial origin means due to the deposition of large amount of organics we see the color of the dystrophic lake is brown or the color of the water is brown and they have a very low productivity due to presence of organics now we will be talking something about liebig law of minimum so what this law states that if we take example for the case of eutrophication in terrestrial water all of you know that phosphate is the limiting factor which determine the growth of phytoplanktons over there 
and this is limiting because the relative proportion of available phosphorus in land water compared to other elements is less than the relative proportion of these elements in phytoplankton's body. So we can observe here that the phytoplankton is having more phosphate in compared to the phosphate available in water. So phosphate is limiting generally in terrestrial water body. In marine water, nitrate is the limiting factor. So these two questions generally they ask. In terrestrial water, we have phosphate limiting and in marine water, we have nitrate as limiting factor. And the law was given by Liebig, so we call it Liebig law of minimum. And generally, what is observed that the substance which is in minima will decide the rate of any reaction or progress of any reaction. So, this was the lecture presented by the team of ASS Science Foundation, Delhi. We tried our level best to justify the topic. Hope you enjoy the lecture. Thank you.